Welcome to CivilNet. Today we're joined by Edmond Marokian. Mr. Marokian is the leader of the Bright Armenia Party, which is the second largest parliamentary opposition force in the country. Mr. Marokian, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. I think third largest. Third largest, but second largest. largest opposition. Yes. Uh, so the Prime Minister and yourself yesterday posted on Facebook that parliamentary elections will take place on June 20th. You were a major figure in the negotiations between the opposition and the government. So what are the plans now for yourself and your party? So the whole negotiations started um, after our statement that we are ready to sign memorandum if the Prime Minister will leave the Ministry of Defence and uh, the generals and then we will sign memorandum. So we started negotiations in the light of the situation that we have a crisis in uh, Ministry of Defence. Then, you know, we have no consensus. So he was arguing that we should not connect two issues, elections and the problem and crisis in Ministry of Defence as one issue. So, whatever, we uh, debated about 40 minutes when we met. And then uh, this problem became, you know, already outdated. So then we come up, we, we come up with another uh, proposal that without any precondition, without any memorandum, we are ready to dissolve this parliament we will not run for prime ministership. We will not have candidate, or we will not vote for any candidate in the parliament mm -hmm. when prime minister resigns. And we need elections, snap elections, as soon as possible. So I said I think we must have it before June 1st. Then, during the negotiations, we come up uh, with a date because they were arguing that we can organize in October or we can organize, well, 2023. So, but we come up with a solution June 20th. So, and we have consensus, the Bright Armenia Party, Prosperous Armenia Party, and My Step Faction. So we have consensus on this issue, just to have elections, snap elections in June 20th. And we are now preparing the party, our people, our members of uh, electoral commissions for the upcoming parliamentary elections. And you represent a major political force in the country. I'm interested with regards to electoral reform or the electoral code. Um, yes. Do you think the current system is um, desirable or do you think Armenia is in the need of a new electoral system and proper electoral reform? Well, uh, of course, I think that um, we must change electoral code but not the one that we have as a draft law. So now we have a draft in the parliament which is circulated just a couple of days ago, uh, which is about closed 100% proportional system. So we know that all elites of parties are you know, people who live in Yerevan. So if we go closed uh, proportional system elections, so then we will have mainly Yerevan concentrated parliament and regions, Marsis, will not be represented in the, let's say, this is seven, eighth convocation of the parliament. So that is why we argued before. This is during a one year, you know. It's a year ongoing discussion and debate. There is a group which is working and Bright Armenia Party, the only oppositional party who appointed representatives to work together with my state majority to draft the electoral code. So we proposed uh, open, uh, not a majoritarian system, but it's open proportional rating system that you, if you are a well-known guy in the country, let's say politician or well-known artist, so, and you are running in a proportional list. So people can vote for you in every city and in every village. So this was our proposal in order to keep balance between Yerevan city and the whole regions of Armenia. But this proposal uh, was not supported by my step. And then they sent it together with their proposal, with their draft law to the Venice Commission. So I think uh, at the end of the 
April for mid-April we, we can have uh, opinion of the Venice Commission so but the biggest issue is this we are you know together we have this consensus for June 20 and we announced it it means that starting from that moment every party every politician is preparing for elections and preparing according to the law that is in force now. Mm -hmm. It's electoral code. So we have, uh, let's say, it's a big game. So we have rules for this game. And now we are, you know, we're receiving a lot of letters that you must change the rules of the game during the game. So the game already started. So we can't change. So, of course, my step party faction, uh, they have 83 mandates in the parliament right now, mm -hmm. so they can pass that law because uh, they needed um, 80 votes, so they can do so. But as I know, uh, prosperous Armenia as well will not vote, and we as well. So there is no consensus to adopt re that legislation right now when uh, the game is already started and the rules are clear and we already participated with these rules in 2018. So, and if they will start uh, debate the new electoral code, for sure we will propose again this open uh, rating system that we were proposing before. Yeah. And um, I'm interested, are there any political forces that your party, the Bright Armenia Party, is willing to collaborate with? Or are there any other parties that uh, your party is determined not to collaborate with? Well, you mean uh, during the election? During elections? the election, yes. So we have decision so far, I can, st I can tell you that, so far we have a decision that we will run as a single party, as a Bright Armenia Party. We will not uh, establish any alliances. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, at this moment, we have this decision. And I think we are determined to run as a single party. And uh, do you not think there's a certain degree of synergy between the current government and the old government? Um, some people think that in a sort of way they prop each other up and that disallows new political forces to move forward. So uh, do you think there's any way Armenian people can help really break the system? And do you think this is a dynamic which exists? Well, I have a lot of speeches about that, that um, the, the incumbent prime minister and the MyStep faction, they always claim that if you are not satisfied with us, so bring back Ser Sarkisyan, bring back Gagi Kachatrian. So I'm citing the speech of the prime minister about a year ago. So, and I was condemning this speech. Why? Because he, as a prime minister, uh, telling us that his alternative is Ser Sarkisyan, not Edmond Marukan, not other, you know, uh, parties that are, you know, new parties, uh, as a new Armenian system parties, value-based parties. No, he was arguing that his alternatives are the guys who are right now prosecuted and, you know, they have cases in courts right now and corruption allegations and a lot of things. I mean, they like this system. They want to show the people that we are white and they are blacks. So our alternatives are blacks. So that is why you must consolidate your vote and vote for us. Otherwise, the blacks will come and they will eat you, let's say. <laughs> so it's a crazy thing. But of course, your, what you said, it's very important. I mean, they are uh, supporting each other and keeping alive each other, I mean, politically keeping alive. Because otherwise, if the people find out that this incumbent government has alternative, and the alternative is not the previous governments or ruling parties that we had before for 30 years, so they will vote for that parties. And the Bright Armenia, uh, you know, uh, momentum is that. So we will use this momentum to be the alternative in the middle of black and white and be a purple 
our, our, our color is purple, you know. Yes. <laughs> and according to many, and uh, uh, you've mentioned this before, the current powers have issues with competence and have been unable to really reform the country. But at the same time, do you not accept that uh, the armed forces and the courts, for example, have been highly politicized in, in recent years, and many do believe they have political biases. So isn't that more uh, a factor that impedes reform rather than, rather than just the incompetence of the government? Well, I think both, because, uh, because first of all, you know, the <clears throat> this team doesn't have political will to push reforms that are difficult ones. And I was arguing before, before this war, nobody knows that, you know, this war is coming. Actually, we saw that something might happen, but not this kind of nightmare that we have. So we were arguing that, hey, colleagues, you have 73% of votes, a high rating approval. So you must do all difficult reforms now, not leaving this problem, you know. I mean, constitution, to change the constitution that we have now, because it's a very bad one, it's a very bad text. Then reform of the judiciary, then reform of the other institutions that we have. But they didn't do anything. You see, you were, you, you're asking me about electoral code, but why we should debate it now? They have power they are ruling party for three years. Why they didn't adopt it before? Why, why we must adopt during the game that we are started already yesterday? So what I'm saying is that, you know, they, they lost the chance. They lost the chance to change the country. The people vote for them to change the country, but they lost that chance. They just were, you know, overloaded with a lot of stupid things. Not important, you know secondary stuff. They couldn't prioritize issues even. They did a lot of secondary stuff during these three years. And what is important, constitution, electoral code, judiciary system, they just left. And now they know that the rating that you need to change this kind of legislation, they have no rating. Now they have about 30% rating or who knows, maybe not even 30%. And that's why I said, you know, they lost their chance and they must go. They must go, they must um, allow the people to decide uh, who is going to take us from this situation, to find a way out from this situation. And, 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 and um, you know, we are defeated, we have this defeat. Um, we were defeated very badly. So. Uh, and then the crisis is not only political, it's humanitarian crisis, it's social, it's economical. And if we are not solving political crisis, so then the other crisis is we cannot solve. So this was my argument and I believe in that. And I think uh, the only thing that this government can do now, the only thing as a favor for Armenia to organize free and fair elections and to give up power through that elections. So this is the only favor that can do they, they, that they can do that after revolution. And to say, okay, we lost our chance, we are not competent, we had a lot of issues. Okay. So we lost our, our confidence and the people, you know, they didn't trust them. And obviously we're con conducting this interview in English and many of our watchers are abroad. I want them to better understand uh, y your uh, history and past as well. Many of the people in the government now are your former colleagues prior to the revolution. But you spoke about a third way. I'm curious why you didn't decide to join the ruling uh, powers which came after the 2018 revolution and to separate and form a new political force? Well, no, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a right thing to say because the Bright Armenia was established in 2015. Civil contract was established a year ago, 14 I think. So we together, Bright Armenia, civil contract and Republic Party, created way out alliance. So we were together, we got nine mandates. I was leading the list. 
I was leading the way I was pleased. So Nikol Pashinyan was number three. Aram Sarakshan, the leader of Republic Party, was number two in the list. Uh, by the way, it was decided by close ballot of the boards of the three parties. So I was the leader of the, you know, uh, payout alliance running in parliamentary elections. So we got nine mandates. Uh, after, the, after one year in parliament, so we, I could say that um, the alliance collapsed because we have a lot of differences, a lot of. So, and for the revolution, uh, our party and Republic Party, we, are, we were fine to fight against Ser Sarkisian's third term. There was a consensus about it, that we are against of his third term and we will do our best to not allow it. But for doing things that were done during revolution, I mean, taking buildings, state buildings, or, or, or closing uh, streets, doesn't matter what kind of streets, or, or um, freeways to Georgia or Iran, a lot of things I can, you know, bring a lot of examples. We were against of that kind of strategy. And also, uh, my understanding at that time was this, that we must wait and have not revolution, but evolution. We must have a force which is ready to take power and run the country. Not just take the country and just collapse everything and, and lose that chance. And what happened? I was right. The third way was the right way. I was condemned because of that. A lot of, you know, criticized. But what I'm saying is that, you know, <clears throat> a lot of people got that message. And uh, right after revolution that we have elections, uh, there were many, many polls, you know, and also political experts that were uh, foreseeing that, oh, bright Armenia cannot, cannot be in this parliament. You know, the country is full of revolution stuff. You were not part of revolution. You didn't walk with Pashinyan, stuff like that. And you have no chance, no chance, to even be close to the barrier, to electoral barrier. But what happened, we ran with a good program and we are in parliament and we are uh, force number three. And right now, again, the same things, you know, happening now. In polls, uh, different political experts are talking, a lot of money is going in, uh, you know, Spent, spent in this in this particular situation, but in any case, I mean, we will fight, and in the middle we will be the alternative for the old guys who were in the uh, ruling parties and uh, in a government for 20 or 30 years, and for the incumbent government, which lost the chance that Armenian people, not only in Armenia but in diaspora as well, they supported, they were very happy. They were dreaming that this government will be, you know, dream team, you know, changing the country. And what we have now, we have collapsed statehood, I could say. Well, Mr. Marikian, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us on CivilNet.